everyone and happy February. I'm Lee Sand Miller with W Cushion C Company and today we are going to talk about color layering. Color layering is not monochromatic. Color layering is a technique that's been used in interior design for many, many years and it's a way to tie, they use it to tie a room together. Uh, they'll have a color plan and then use one or two accent pieces. We've all seen the white or gray rooms with the turquoise or lime green accent pieces in it. Well, we're going to apply the concept of color layering to our rug hooking. And the first thing is not all patterns can be used in color layering techniques. You need to have an overall pattern. Uh, think of wallpaper. Uh, think of a, a pattern that you have an overall design where there isn't a top, there isn't a bottom, it's just an overall design. For example, here is one if you wanted to practice color layering after I show a lot of examples, and this is Prudence. There really is no top or bottom. You can layer your colors many different ways. You can use the centers as an accent, your background as an accent, but it's an overall pattern. It looks like wallpaper. It's not a geometric. It's not an abstract, uh, but you use it as an overall design like wallpaper. And this is Prudence, okay? The pattern that I chose to do the color layering in was Sakina. And I liked Sakina because it did remind me of wallpaper. And I chose three colors with an accent and then two other accents. Your amount of accents have to, have to do with the colors that you choose. So my palette was very soft. I used the texture Teaberry, Rosy, Skinny Mini. And then my first pop of an accent was Chocolat. I used the chalk a lot so that you moved through the pattern and didn't get lost because this is a very subtle color layering. Then I decided that I needed something else to come into it and I used the taupey grays. The taupey grays work very well together. They work in and the taupey grays were a dyed piece so it has a different motion than a textured piece. And then I found little bits that I have of my silk dyed wool that, yes, they're kind of accents, but they're part of the color layering. So in this case, my color layering was a very pale, almost a rose or rosy uh, package. And then my first accent in here was the chocolate. And then I went in with the grays the taupey with a little bit of beige. These are another accent. And this is all not the same color. It's dyed wool. The dyed wool makes it move around, okay? The next accent that I put in, the second accent that I put in, were these brighter pops of color with a little blue. And while they're in this layered palette, they did pop a little bit and of course, you cannot um, have the same silk dyed wool all the way through, so I changed the silk dyed wool to also move around. Now, my first attempt at the layering, and I left it in, was to use a green. And with this, I used a green and not the taupe. The green jaded the whole palette way too much. It's a nice, soft overall palette. It's got motion into it. The beigey, taupey gray works. This gray sticks out like a sore thumb. That's how you know your layering or your accent is not working at all. This goes with the brown. So in, a, in essence, you have your main colors that you are layering and then your accents that add to the accent your layers, but also layer amongst themselves. If that makes any sense at all, that's good because you actually have two layers. You have your main layer, which is your main color, and then your accent layers. Now, in here, in this little piece right here, exemplifies everything we're talking about. Here are my main colors, rosy, tea berry, skinny mini, okay? And I came in here with my chocolate. Here is my accent color, okay? Here's the chocolate, just an off, 
piece of it, of the plaid. And then here is my silks. So in this piece, I've encompassed the layering and the accents to see if they work. And sometimes you have to test this. If you haven't hooked in this way before, you have to test your palette and then test your accents. And it's always good to test it in one little area to see if you like it. Now, when you're doing color layering, your background is not an accent. Your background is part of the initial palette. So that is something to keep in mind, and that is the difference. This is not a monochromatic. There are other colors in here. This is color layering. Okay, now, show you another color layering. And color layering can go across many styles, as I showed you. Here's a pictorial with color layering. This was a pattern insert in Rug Hooking Magazine, who is the sponsor of this video, and we thank them very much. And this was a free pattern insert that we did about a year ago uh, in a November, December uh, issue. So check for it, because this is a great way to learn your color layering. I took blues and grays. I took blues and grays. Here is Cloud Nine. Here's the texture, a little bit of gray, gray. Use that all the way through. Use the darker gray, but I popped it with golds and yellows. I made this come alive. You see the moon, you see the filtering, you see the lights in the windows, and that's what makes it the layer and the pop. This is such a small piece, we only needed really one pop in it. And the gold and yellow is the pop in this piece or the accent in this layer. So we went from a very pale gray, almost white, and then we went to gray, blue gray, dark gray. We layered those colors in, and then we popped it with the golds and the yellows. Now this is sculpted. This is sculpted, which creates another layer but I never changed from the original palette. I didn't change the colors. And that's, this is not a monochromatic, but this is color layering. Another example that you've seen, but now we're gonna talk about it in a different way, is the Welcome Home. This is very much color layering at its best. These are all purpley blues, a little bit of gray blues, okay? And the background, and the snow mounds, even the trees. These are all purpley blues. Where we popped it this time was with the taupey gray. We went with taupe, brownish taupe, gray, and a little taupey green in here. These are actually blue-black plaids. So we kept all of this in one layer, and then the accent again is in the taupey browns and in the green browns. So we're layering the colors, and these were many colors. This is, happens to be Lee Sand Sky. This was the texture, Cloud Nine. There's some uh, frosty dyed wool in here. And it's a good way uh, to use both your dyed wools and textures in one piece for a really great effect. The last accent that was done here is the Arctic Rays. And that is the Arctic Rays as another accent. Uh, mixed media can be an accent, but the mixed media cannot overpower the piece. The one of the other color layering pieces, and then we'll get into different color layering combos. This is Adams Hall Runner. This was one of the first color layering pieces that I did. And this piece here, uh, the whole thing was in the blues. I went from robin's egg bright blue to a, a smoky dark blue to a Copenhagen blue to a turquoisey blue, and I used that colors all the way around. Now, my accents, my pops in here, happen to be these gray. If you notice, every once in a while, these grays will show up. I used the grays when I needed some definition, when I needed something to come out, um, I used that. The background does not layer in with this. The background is actually an accent to show you what happens 
if you were to use the background as an accent. So while this is every shade of blue you can imagine with the green or the turquoise blue green in it, the gray as the accent color, and even this is really the accent colors, this, these grays in here, these grays here, I used um, five different textures in the back here that resemble lights and shadows, and that became the accent. I wanted it to look like sand, um, it did dull everything else. If I was to color layer this a different way, I would use a lighter blue background almost to a white blue background and then the grays would pop a little more. This is a little more muddied because my accent is the background. It is five textures and as you can tell it's a lot more muddied uh, that way. While it looks great, um, and it works for what I wanted it to do, it would have been a little more distinct had I used a lighter blue background, a very pale, almost white blue background. So let's talk about how we plan these colors. And I've got a table full of great colors. So let's start with my favorites, which are blue. I love to color layer in blue. Okay, so if I'm gonna color layer in blue, I'm gonna pick some of my favorite blues, and I might even pop this purple blue in here because that may lead me to an accent, it may not. So I'm gonna add a little bit more into the color in here, okay? I'm gonna go into a little bit of the dyed wool into here, and I'm layering all these blues. I've got light blue, a medium, a dark, a purple blue, a dyed blue. Now I gotta pick some accents to go with this. The accents can go in one of two directions. We could go in a purple direction. We could, you know, we need the accent. We've layered all the colors. We can go in a green direction. Uh, we can go in a taupe or a gray direction. So the first direction we're gonna go into is a gray to show you how that will work. So if I'm gonna accent this with gray, it's not as distinct. So I'm thinking that may not work. So we may leave the grays right there. So now I'm gonna go to a blue-green, and I could go to a darker green if I wanted, but the blue-green blends, it's still an accent piece. If you think back to the Sakina, this could be a Sakina palette. This could be one of the accent colors. And then we could pull in another green. And the other green that we could pull in would be like a mojito, which is a darker green, or we could pull in a brown. So we could say no to the green, we're not gonna accent it with a green, but we could go in the level of turquoise and brown. We could bring in meeting house blue, that could be an accent. We could bring in hard cider, where this is an accent still to the palette. And if you think about how I use chalk a lot, you could use these two colors the way that I use chalk a lot into Sakina. Now, they, these two colors work really well. This is the Big Chill, which was January's Wool of the Month. We could go that way with it. So this is one possible palette, one possible palette. Or we can take these away because we're gonna use these in another way in a minute and I'm gonna go behind me and I'm gonna grab a nice fields of blueberry. Now I'm bringing in the purple, okay? Now I'm bringing in the purple. So here's the purple. I've picked up the purple out of this plaid as an accent. It's looking very nice together. This would be what my chocolate was in Sakina and then you could find some silks, uh, silk dyed wools, some other hand dyed wools to go along with this, uh, such as deep purple, Whee. like that. So there we go. Here's one, color layers, your accents. And that would work here the way that we did Sakina. So now we're gonna take another way to color layer and this is the blue. I love the blues, as you can tell. Everybody has seen the Woodland Santa that I like to do all in blues. 
Blues are fun to layer because there's many depths to the blues. Same thing with greens. But now we're gonna do this a different way. We're gonna start with dyed wool. We are gonna start with some dyed wool. And we're gonna start with neutrals. So we have pebbles, we have parchment, we have the big chill. So we've gone into the softer mode. We'll pick a darker one. We're gonna pick hard cider. We're gonna layer that in. So we've actually gone from light to medium to dark. And now, you know, we've got a good palette to start. This is our first layer, our base layer. Now we need to accent. Well, you could again accent with Meeting House Blue because the brown is in it. You can pick up some turquoise. You can go along now and you can add, you can take that away if that's not what you like, and we can add textures as the accent. You can add mysterious green in. You could add in sweet pea. So these would be your pops of color, and these would be your base colors to start with. And then, since we have parchment with that little bit of gold in it, we could add this as a softer accent. So now this is our base layers that we're gonna use throughout the rug. And then these become our pops or our accents of colors. So this is the reverse where we've used the dyed wool as our base and the textures as our pops of color. Now we're gonna get into a little bit of the softer colors. So this is Gull, it's got the taupes and the blues. We're gonna go with Frosty a little bit, layer Frosty in, lights and sh lake shadows. And we may think that that's a little too bright, so we may go with these two. And then we may add in Kaleidoscope for a little bit more. So we've got gray, blue gray, the taupey gray. This is a great base to start with. And then you're gonna add in your colors. Now, you can go this way with the tea berry. You can add in fields of heather because this texture here has blue in it and a little bit of the green in it. And you can add these as your accents. You could actually throw this in, this little silk dyed wool because it has the blue from here. So you've layered everything. This is your layer and this becomes your accents. Again, it's the reverse. We're starting with text, we're starting with dyed and using textured and silks. Another great way to start out is to start out with a bundle. So you're gonna start out with a texture bundle and then you're gonna pick your accent. And we're gonna do a neutral bundle. And we're gonna do a neutral, first neutral bundle we're gonna do is more, not gray, it's more of a taupe, a beige. So this is a bundle, okay? This starts our color layering. So from here, we're gonna jump off to the accents. Well, we could accent with a dark green. And you see how that immediately changes the bundle. And then we could accent with another green mysterious and sweet pea, okay, and leave it that way. But if I was to take these two out and start to accent with blue, this bundle becomes a little bit more gray. These become the base layers, and then this becomes the pop of color. And then we could add in federal blue for another pop kind of the way I did with Chocolat. So this is your base, this is your colors, this would be my background, this would be my uh, stems and leaves, and then these would be my pops of color. And then I could add in a silk dyed wool such as this. It's got the blue, it's got the beige, and a little bit of green. Or I could add in a grayish one like this. So that's your base layer, your background. These are your pops of color throughout. Another great combo is using your reds. Now, this would be my base layer. 
My background could be this color or this color. It doesn't really matter. It could even be this. Now this is my telltale what I could mix in with it. My pop, my accent, my next layer could contain this. My next layer could also have this. Could also have this. So here's my my base layer what I'm starting with this could be my background that could be my background this would probably or this any of these could be your background this could be my leaves stems flowers and these are my pop this would be like my chocolate was in Sakina because you will see it it's very predominant and these are my softer pops all the way around so this is another layered color palette and when you look at a texture color palette um, and you want to layer it, a pattern, a plaid such as this, this hooks like a dyed wool. Because the plaid is, for lack of a better way to say this, muted, it's not distinct. There aren't distinct lines like Gilbert Green. Mysterious Green, uh, not Mysterious Green, uh, Mystical Green has a very soft Okay, Gilbert has very defined lines, so it hooks more like a texture. When you have these soft, soft lines in it, it hooks more like a dyed wool, as does cranberry stripe. So that is a, an important tip when you're looking at these. And this is all textures. I didn't pull any dyed wool in, so I think that you can do it either way, all dyed, all textured, a mix. A mix is always better. There's a little bit more motion to it. Okay. I am going to do a green based one because the green based one is a lot of fun. And March is St. Patrick's Day. So we have, this could be a background as a dark background. This is mysterious green. It has a little blue purple in here that may come into play. We've got Gilbert green. We've got guacamole and we've got sweet pea. So this is our base layer. Background, could be leaves, stems, fill in. So we can accent this in many ways. It, of course, yeah, we can immediately bring in the cranberry, but this looks very Christmas. This is not really the right pop that you wanna use. So for a pop in this, we can go with the yellow. We can go with this because it's got a little bit of red. You know, you've got to look at your texture. You've got to make it work. But this is where we bring in a soft pop as well. This also works as your pop, your accent, your next layer. Here's your base layer. Here's your next layer. And this is a soft layer. This is basically uh, what I did with Sakina. I used a soft one, and here's a soft layer. This would be what I like chocolate. This would be the softer layer that I used. And then if you really wanted to pop it a little bit more, you can come in here with turning leaf, which ties it all in together. So this would stay first. This would be a soft, another accent, then two more accents on top. And then that would be your palette for your rug. We're not talking about adding anything else in. This at, at this stage, that would be it. So as you can see, there are a thousand different ways to do this. You have to start with your base layers. What is your color palette? And when you pick your color palette, a lot of times that will tell you what direction to go in. And if you pick what you like, then you're always gonna be happy with it. Now, here is the reverse. We're not gonna use dyed. We're, gonna, we're not gonna use textured, we're gonna use dyed. So here's our greens. This is our base layers. This will be our background, or this could be our background right here, fall hydrangea. So here's our background, and we're gonna use luscious green, uh, we're gonna use uh, grassy greens and emerald. So these are the base colors for our rug, for our whatever we're gonna do, prudence, a floral, a pictorial. This is our background. Here is our first layer. We have a lot of different directions to go. We could pick, of course, purple. 
and tie in a purple silk with it if we wanted, okay? We could pick the purple as a pop. We could lean in towards this as the pop, okay? That's one, one way to go. We can go another way with something like Nantucket, which pops in this blue. It's not a turquoise blue, but it is a blue. And then we could probably bring in, if you liked it, Meeting House Blue and pop this as well. Not as strong as some of the others that we've shown, but it still does work. And yes, you can go and pop like that. Very, a little Christmas meat, a little holiday-ish. Um, but you can always go with a safe bet, and the safe bet is a gold. Okay, and that is a typical layer. But if you wanted something a little out of the box, then you're going to go with a blue. And you're going to layer the blues in. So these become your accents. Here's your base layer. Here's your accents. And you could even get away with, because of the purple, prep school plaid. So then you could add that in. This is your base, these are your pops. Conversely, this could be the base for your, for your rug, this your background, these are your two, and this could be your accents. If you choose this correctly, you can flip them either way. It's what, you, what color palette you want to highlight. One last one that's not done too much, and then I think you can start planning your color-layered rug.